this is an LA racer wing. I'm going to show you how to mount a mini servo sunken into the wing so there's a little less drag. It's a real easy process. I had stripped the top of this wing because I'm covering it with some uh, checkerboard covering to match uh, the tail. Uh, I had a damaged wing and I'm putting a new wing together and while I had the, the top off I decided I would use a mini servo and save about an ounce and a half on the wing. One of the things with the LA Racer is that the servos when you use a standard servo you have the servo sticking up in the airstream but if you use a mini servo even if you're using a standard servo you could do the same thing but it's real easy if you use a mini servo I have a diagram that has uh, these parts they'll be published uh, on the RC Pro website and um, basically I make two pieces one is an outer ring that comes up under the current mounting block and it's cut big enough for the servo to fit in and I've notched the bottom of the or the rear of the hole so that the servo can fit down in there and then I have another little plate this is where the servo screws into and it fits right in there and what you're left with is a cavity where the servo fits right into so I'm going to glue it in and I'll show the servo in place and we'll be done. So I always wear gloves when I'm handling epoxy. It makes cleanup a lot easier. And for mixing epoxy, I use paper plates a lot. This is just System 3 5 minute epoxy, which is one of the best 5 minute epoxies I've found. You really only have about 3 minutes from the time you get it fully mixed till it starts to go off so you have to work pretty quick but it's a very hard curing epoxy it's not gummy like some of the hobby epoxies you can get it at woodcraft and like I said it's a very very good epoxy it's also expensive but mix it well and it will hold your parts. I use an artist spatula. I get them at Michael's. And with this epoxy, you better clean it off with the spatula before it goes off or you will be cutting it off with a knife.
In this case, I really only need epoxy on the ends because there's nothing on, on the way I made these parts, they have, instead of using separate pieces on each end, I made them where they're joined instead of trying to handle separate little pieces. A lot of times I do that because I don't like trying to fit little pieces and I have a lot more success when I can just take a piece and pop it in place. And in this case, And I'm using gloves primarily because I am using my fingers to get the epoxy that's in there out of the way. And I clean my spatula. And now I get the epoxy that's gotten down on the servo mounting plate. And I don't really care that it's gotten down on the servo plate because the servo is just going to go down on it anyway. But I don't want it to cause me problems when, it's, when I put the servo in there. So I get it out of, out of the way. Of course, I could come back with a grinding tool and dig the epoxy out, but it's easier to get the epoxy out of the way while, you're, while you can, while the epoxy's not set up. And what I'm going to do is grab a screwdriver with a sharper point and get a little bit more of that epoxy out of there.
it's in place. Everything looks good. Let's turn it over. Let it set up. Clean my screwdriver. Make sure my spatula is clean. Okay, it's pretty well cured, enough to work with. The two pieces, since I had the the pieces just barely wide enough for the servo, and since I put two pieces one on top of the other, there's some misalignment, and I need to file the the part file them to make it so the servo will fit. So the servo fits right in now. If you look at it from this angle, you can see that the only thing sticking up is the spline for the servo arm. So I can put clear covering over it with a hole in it for inspection so that the tech inspector can see that there's a four, four screw servo. And one thing I'm gonna show is how I drill or how I put the, the, the screws in for servos. I use the dead center tool from Great Plains. Um, the hole it drills is the perfect pilot hole for servo screws. And all you do is put it in and gently turn don't put too much pressure on it just let it drill through your plywood it goes right in Now I do the opposite corner. My dead center tool is about worn out, that's why I bought a new one. Looks like I'm gonna have to go to my new one. Uh, I can go ahead and finish this last hole.
I've been using this same dead center tool for over 10 years for marking holes in engine mounts and for drilling servo holes. It's been an extremely valuable tool. So that completes the installation of the servo. And hope you found it interesting. And that's a way to reduce the drag on the LA Racer 40. And use many servos at the same time. And save a little weight. See you at the races. This is what the cavity looks like with the servo holes in it. And this is what it looks like from the bottom. Now I'm ready to cover the top. And if you weren't covering the whole top, you can easily cut out the area where the uh, servo bay is and just put a simple patch over it. You might want to put some trim covering over it, whatever. Um, but for the weight savings uh, and being able to use the mini servos and be able to reduce the drag, uh, I think it's worth it. The LA Racer is my favorite of the Sky Raider Mach 2 and the LA Racer. So, I like the direct coupling of the servo to the Elron instead of the Torque 2 like the Sky Raider Mach 2 has. Even though the control horn's out in the, in the air, um, you don't have the sloppiness of a Torque 2.